the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles have had some of the best games in the retro era. While the first NES release wasn't the best experience for gamers of the time, the subsequent beat-em-up releases definitely were. Turtles 2, which was a port of the amazing arcade game, was such a popular experience for gamers hardcore and casual alike that when you bring up the NES to just about anyone, it's within the top games people remember loving from their childhood. But what about TMNT 3 The Manhattan Project? If you're a retro enthusiast, you definitely know about this game, but it's kind of surprising how many people haven't played this one or were even aware of it. I was a bit surprised by the results of my Twitter poll, though. I guess there are more lovers of this game than I initially thought. I only played Turtles 3 once growing up. I knew about the game thanks to a neighbor, but I was one of the kids who moved on to the Super Nintendo and Turtles in Time before I had a chance to play this gem. I actually didn't own Turtles in Time, but my brother and I would rent it from time to time to play through it. It was such a short playthrough for us that we didn't really care to ask for it from our parents. A few years later, I picked up the copy I always rented at my local Blockbuster when they were selling old games from systems they didn't rent out anymore. Kind of a fun story, but I'm getting off track. The Manhattan Project was released in December 1991 in Japan, and a few months later in February of 1992 in North America. This is interesting because Turtles in Time, which was ported to the SNES later in 92 as Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 4, actually released in the arcades worldwide in early 1991. So Turtles 3 was created after Turtles 4. But looking at the funky release cycle of NES and SNES games between Japan and North America in the 80s and 90s, it's honestly not that surprising. What makes this interesting, though, is that there are several things in TMNT 3 that draw inspiration from Turtles in Time. The big one being the final boss with Super Shredder, which is a similar fight and even has the same music composition as Turtles 4, or Turtles in Time. It's pretty cool, actually. One thing I do want to point out is that if you notice that my NES footage looks super crisp, it's because of my new retro USB AVS system. I love this thing. I have an option to turn on extra sprites, meaning the system can handle more sprites on screen than the original NES was able to. That leads to less sprite flicker that you see in a lot of games like this. The TMNT games all have a lot of flicker to account for a bunch of enemies on screen at the same time. It was a great way for Konami to get these games to run well on the NES, and if I want to have that pure experience, I still can. But I really do love being able to reduce the flicker and get a better view of the pixel art and animations of the characters and enemies. When you turn on TMNT 3, you get a somewhat familiar intro that was missing from the previous game. If you're wondering why I'm saying it's familiar, because it's very similar to the original arcade release of TMNT 2. After starting the game, you select your turtle and are greeted with a neat intro cutscene that lays out the story. The teenage brothers are in Key West on vacation when a local New York TV news report by April they happen to be able to watch hundreds of miles away on a portable TV is interrupted by the Shredder saying he's levitated Manhattan and captured the spunky journalist. Donatello must have a heck of an antenna installed on that thing. The turtles spring into action, fight off a bunch of robotic foot soldiers on the beach, beat up a poor endangered rhinoceros, then cowabunga their way to New York on surfboards. These turtles are totally badass if they can surf one wave from Florida to New York. That's a long trip on land. I mean, how fast are they going? At least they hitch a ride on a submarine. Were they planning that all along or were they just winging it? In the first level, there are a few things that are immediately apparent. The graphics are a huge step up from Turtles 2. There are so many new animations throughout the game, the sprite art is better detailed, the foot soldiers don't have weird misshapen heads anymore, the backgrounds are so much more colorful and vibrant compared to the slightly muted colors of the previous game. The second thing is that the gameplay is quite a bit more robust. While the basic controls and gameplay are pretty much the same, A jumps, B attacks, you need to hit foot soldiers twice with your regular attack to take them out, there are a few new moves that the boys in green have at their disposal. They can now throw enemies with their weapons by pressing down and B at the same time. And they have a special attack that hits for very high damage and whittles down your own health when activated if you press A and B at the same time. Compared to the last game, fighting feels a lot better in Turtles 3. In TMNT 2, fighting with your normal attack doesn't seem quite right. The foot soldiers have a moment of invulnerability that makes it hard to string together attacks. 
That kind of makes it so you need to use your A plus B special attack constantly to get through, or use jump kicks. Normal attacks aren't really sustainable throughout the game. In Turtles 3, this invulnerability is gone, so stringing together attacks is a lot easier and makes for a more fluid and engaging battle experience. Additionally, there are more enemy types, the bosses have different patterns, and seem a lot more active, and generally the game just feels more involved than the last one. The point system is also overhauled here, with more points granted to the player depending on how you take out your enemy. Regular attacks on foot soldiers net you 600 points. Throws and jump kick attacks give you 400, and special attack kills give you only 200 points. As in other arcade games, points give you one-ups as you gain more, and in TMNT 3, this is the best way to keep your run going without needing to continue. So don't spam that throw attack unless you know you won't be needing one-ups sooner than later. It's a nice risk versus reward mechanic. You can kill stuff faster and safer with the lower scoring options, but you won't get those sweet one-ups as quickly if you take the more standard approach to attacking. And the big thing I love about the Manhattan Project is the ability to swap your turtle after each life. You don't have to wait for a game over to switch. The special attacks are unique enough between each brother that playing the different turtles is fun rather than just sticking with your favorite for the entire game. For a bit of extra fun, if you hit down five times on the player select screen in single player mode, or ten times in two player, you will get a random turtle assigned to you after each lost life. There are also fun little things that happen that make the presentation just a bit better. Like when the water fills up in the sewers before the Leatherhead fight, or when the boss music starts when Dirtbag appears in the minecart in the subway level, then cuts out when he misses his stop, and then starts back up again when he turns around to come back and fight. You aren't just slogging through and fighting foot soldier after foot soldier waiting for the game to be over. Let's face it, some of the levels in Turtles 2 are kind of bland. Remember the highway stage? Nothing to see here other than the occasional convertible filled with death bots. But the highway stage in Turtles 3? The bridge is all torn up, there are pits to watch out for, and the backgrounds are actually interesting to look at with more varying colors and designs. One thing I'm not sure holds up against Turtles 2 is the music. I think overall I just like the compositions that play around with the variations on the Turtles cartoon theme a bit better. That's not to say the music in 3 is bad, far from it. There are actually a lot of really fun tunes that set the tone for the game very well. It's a fun cartoon inspired game that has a lot of bright, upbeat, and driving music that gets you in the mood to kick some foot. When I popped in Turtles 3 to record it, I was expecting to have to end up using a cheat code to give myself more lives after getting halfway through the game. I'm not particularly good at beat em ups, but I actually found the challenge to be pretty even throughout. I got to Krang at the end of the last level, right before facing Super Shredder, before I ran out of continues. I went ahead and used the cheat code to finish off the game for this recording, but I'm planning to go back and challenge it again. Games get my seal of approval if I'm ready to jump back into it after I record and write out a review. The challenge on TMNT3 is just about right if you ask me. Having several methods to instantly dispose of enemies is very convenient. The throw and special attack kill all your foot soldiers in one hit, so if you're running low on life and are just trying to get to the end of the level or that next pizza, you can use the cheaper methods to get by faster. I feel like the game could be a little more generous with the pizza life refills, but it didn't really hinder my experience all that much. One tip I do have is if you are already at super low health, just spam your special attack until you fall. You'd be surprised how far you can get on that alone. It's not really that broken though, because if you get hit once, you're dead. But wait, if you want to, you can even adjust the difficulty to an easy mode in the cheat menu, where enemies are much easier to kill and your turtle takes more damage before falling. I didn't even realize this was an option until I went in to try to finish off Super Shredder. It's a cool option for people who are having problems playing the game, but I don't see why this wasn't just an option from the get-go. You shouldn't have to enter a code to get to this. This was rectified in Turtles in Time, thankfully. There's also a sound test in this menu, which is also a very welcome addition to any game. By the way, the code is up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, start. My biggest beef with the Manhattan Project is easily the boss fights. This rings true in most Konami beat-em-ups that I've played, though. It's just hard to get in and do damage without getting knocked away immediately. 
These fights just seem to eat up a lot of lives without having an easily identifiable weak spot where you can jump in and do a bunch of damage before you're knocked to the other side of the screen. Maybe that's just me and my inability to play these types of games well, but I just had to bring up my experience. The spread and level designs in TMNT 3 is pretty standard for the most part. You have your highway level, your sewer level, your city level, your surfing level, and of course the Technodrome. You also get a beach level, a submarine level, and a rooftop level. The one thing that kind of sets the city and highway levels apart from other games that we've seen is the fact that they're suspended in midair, which gives it a unique feel. You can even toss foot soldiers over the edge in some locations. And now to the point of my whole video. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 The Manhattan Project is an excellent game, and I would even dare to say that it's better than its predecessor. I highly recommend giving it a shot if you've never played it before, or if it's been a long time since you last did. I had a blast playing through it, and I plan to do it again very soon, if only to beat it without needing to cheat to get back to the last boss. My question for you is, which TMNT game on the NES is your favorite? Thanks for watching. Later.